Welcome to Classic Gamer 74, episode 31, Star Trek Strategic Operations Simulator, from 1983 by Sega. I am Anthony Ventrillo, your host, and this episode was suggested by my wife, Verl Ventrillo. When Gene Roddenberry first created Star Trek, I don't think he had any idea at all about the cultural phenomenon that he would bring. The original show debuted in 1966 and ran for three seasons. It followed the adventures of Captain James T. Kirk and his crew aboard the Starship Enterprise as they sought out new life and new civilizations throughout the galaxy. The series is noted for its progressive civil rights stances and for including one of TV's first multiracial casts. It also had TV's first interracial kiss. The series not only made a household name of William Shatner, who played Captain Kirk, but also Leonard Nimoy, who played Mr. Spock the Vulcan. It spawned an animated series, five spin-off TV series, a film franchise, books, comics, and games, and finally, a video game, as well as a large variety of merchandise, some great and some not so great. And let's not forget the fans, the Trekkers and Trekkies, who span multiple generations and come from every corner of the globe. The game is a space combat simulation. It is a vector game with 2D display and 3D first-person perspective. They made use of synthesized speech since sampled audio was too expensive and took up too much memory. There were two styles of cabinets, the upright stand-up, as you see here, and the sit-down, semi-enclosed deluxe cabinet with the player's chair modeled after the bridge chairs from the TV show and the first movie. The controls were quite interesting as you had a weighted spindle and four buttons. Welcome aboard, Captain. All right, so the object of this game is to defend the sectors from the Klingon ships. Now, the four buttons that you have are the impulse engines, warp engines, phasers, and photon torpedoes. And occasionally, you're going to take hits from the Klingon vessels. Uh, when you do, all you have to do is dock on a starbase to get your ship prepared. Sector 1.2. Each sector gets more difficult as the Klingons are faster and more accurate. The best thing to do on here is to try to conserve as much of your power as possible for the higher up levels in which you will really need them. Also, if you go through an area without docking at a star base, you get extra points. And you keep fighting until the Klingons eventually take you out. Entering Sector 1.6.
Because the game was so popular and was one of 1983's biggest grossing games of the year, it made sense that the game had to be ported out to some of the home video game systems. However, because it was impossible for a home video game system to use vector graphics, uh, they had to use raster graphics instead, which some people believe would make the game a lot better. Another problem was that the uh, Atari arcade game had four buttons as to where the Atari 2600 only had one. Therefore, it was necessary to put this overlay on the joystick so that the players would know how to do everything in the game. With all that in mind, the Atari 2600 port of the game was not as big of a success as the arcade game. However, I still felt the game was fun, and maybe you will too, so let's check it out. Alright, as you can see, it's pretty much identical to the arcade format in which you are trying to clear the Klingons out of the sectors. Okay. Now, each of the two, each two sectors are pretty much the same, uh, except for that there are more Klingons with each uh, new sector. Now, in the third sector, what you're going to do is you're going to go through an asteroid or comet field, and you have to touch the star bases that are moving around so they can repair your ship. And like the arcade game, you can actually go to uh, the star bases during the level. Uh, however, it, I always found it's better to wait till you get to this third level uh, to get your ship repaired uh, by just flying around in this asteroid or comet field. They don't really make it clear. And when you get to the, um, the sixth sector, you're going to be fighting up against uh, Nomad, which is a really bad, sh I guess a Klingon ship, uh, and then you have uh, a minefield surrounding it. So a little bit difficult. I haven't quite yet been able to get past uh, the fifth level yet, but if you are able to get past it, then on the next one, it just kind of restarts again uh, and your enemies are just a lot faster. So not a bad port of the game. Uh, it could have been a lot better, but at the same time, you know, with not being able to port vector graphics, this is about the best as you're going to get. Now, because of the fact that the ColecoVision controller had multiple buttons, porting it out to the ColecoVision was not a big chore like it was with the Atari 2600. So let's check it out. All right, as you can see, it's quite similar in a lot of ways to the arcade version, uh, minus, of course, the vector graphics. But it's quite fast-paced and has a lot in common, actually a lot more in common with the arcade version than the Atari 2600 version did. However, most agree that the Atari 8 computer version of the game was probably one of the best as it had several aspects of the arcade version and some of the things you loved about the Atari 2600 version. Um, one of the, however, other people disagreed as uh, some critics and fans felt that it was too much of a carbon copy of Space Raiders. Um, I personally liked it um, as I felt that the graphics were a big improvement on the 2600 version, and yet it was, you're not going to be able, again, you're not going to be able to totally port vector graphics, even on a computer, so uh, this is about the best you were going to get from that time, for that time period. Well, that brings us to the end of today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to give us a big like and subscribe if you haven't already.
If you have a favorite game or a genre of games that you'd like to see reviewed on this channel, let us know in the comments section below, and who knows, it may be the subject of a later episode. Don't forget to visit our friends at AtariAge.com, AtariProtos.com, and EmuParadise.me for all your classic gaming needs. This has been Anthony Ventrello. Thank you for stopping by, and I will see you in the next episode. Until then, live long and prosper. Goodbye.